بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد uh, firstly إن شاء الله starting tomorrow صلاة العشاء will be at 9.15 p.m. so صلاة العشاء starting tomorrow will be at 9.15 p.m. إن شاء الله uh, secondly today إن شاء الله we will go over verse number 45 and verse number 46 of uh, Surah Al-Kahf. Alhamdulillah, this is like the halfway point and we're almost reaching the halfway of Ramadan, right? So we're going to inshallah finish the Surah by the end of Ramadan. But in the Surah, in verse number 45 and verse number 46, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He continues with the story regarding, the, or, or He continues with the lessons regarding the, the test of prosperity or the test of the beauty of this world, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us that this world is a beauty for us. It's a, it's, it's, it's become lush and luxurious Luxurious for us, it becomes a source of enjoyment for us, but it is not, it is not uh, a place of eternal relaxation, right? For the believer, the eternal is what the afterlife, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He reminds us of this with a small parable in the Quran. He says, "Wadrib lahum mathal al-hayat dunya." O Prophet of Allah, give them the example of this world. Give them the example of this world, kama in anzalnahu min as sama. The example of this world is like water. Anzalnahu min as sama. We sent the water down from the skies. Fakhtala tabihi nabatul ard. And so it mixed with the with the seeds of the ground. Right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he after this he stops. And he doesn't paint the rest of the picture. Right? So what is the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives? Number one, he says that this world is like water. Right? And the first analogy that Imam Razi rahmatullah gives is that human beings need water to survive. Right? And in fact, every single thing is, uh, is, is based, every, every living thing is based on, upon water. Every living thing is based, is, is, is made from water according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So water is the source of all life. Right? This is the first thing. But too much water becomes actually harmful for the human being. Right? Too much water is actually harmful for the, for, for the human being. If similarly, you look at water from the example of a, of a ship. The ship needs water to float, but too much of it will cause the ship to drown, right? If you put water inside the ship, right, it will cause the ship or the boat to drown. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the example of this world like water. We need this water to, to survive in this world, but at the same time, too much of it is actually harmful for the body, right? And too much is harmful for society in general. Imagine if rain did not come down, this entire world would go into famine. But if too much rain came down, which happens, especially in Binghamton, right, we see flooding happen all the time. And so too much of something is also not good, right? Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi when he made the dua for rain, right? He made the dua, we know the, the famous dua for rain, that, you know, someone came during the middle of the khutbah, the, someone came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and said, Ya Rasulullah, the, the crops are completely dry, right? And, and, and the milk has run out for the animals. So make dua for rain. And the Prophet Sallallahu in the khutbah, he, he makes the dua, right? Oh Allah, pour down, uh, you know, uh, rain upon us. And before the khutbah finished, it was raining. And it rained the entire week. And then the next week, the same companion came back. He said, Ya Rasulullah, it rained too much. Right? Ask Allah to lessen the rain. And so the Prophet ﷺ made a dua, Allahumma hawalayna la alayna. Have the rain, but have it around us and do not make it cause, don't make it a, a cause of, of harm for us. Right? Alayna, don't make it against us, but rather make it simple for us and, and beneficial for us. Everything is good in a certain amount. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this world is exactly like this. Kama in anzalnahu min as this is the first analogy. The second analogy, which Imam Razi Rahmullah says, is of the vegetation. What is this analogy? The water comes down from the, from, from the sky, it soaks into the ground. What happens then? That crop will grow. Any crop, right, with, with, when it's given water, it will grow. And as it grows, it has a cycle. Now every person here, even though we live in a city life and we don't do farming, we know the, 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 the stages of a crop. What are the stages of a crop, right? It grows and after it, it flourishes, it becomes green, right? And after a little while, within a year or so, it withers away and it becomes like hay. It becomes yellowish color and it becomes like hay. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is exactly what life is. Every person has a beginning and they grow, they flourish, and after that they wither away and they die. There is nothing in this world, nothing in this world that lasts forever. Even the mountains, which you would assume would be the, the, the strongest, most sturdiest things, right? Allah subhanahu in the next verse, he says, وَيَوْمَ نُسَيِّرُ الْجِبَالِ the, the, the jibal at that day will become like fluff, like cotton candy. Right? They will become like, you know, just like uh, a simple, uh, like uh, basically like string, right? That will be easy to, to move around. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the mountains, right? And so they will become like clouds. وَيَوْمَ نُسَيِّرُ الْجِبَالِ They will become like clouds. So the example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives of this world, he says, number one, it's like 
oh, oh, this wealth, this, the beauty of this world is like water. We need it to survive. We need it to enjoy life. But too much of it is actually harmful for the soul and too much of it is actually detrimental to the body. We become then obsessed with this world and we forget that we have another world, to, another hereafter forever to worry about. The second example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives is like the, the, the crop. Right, that فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتِ الْأَنَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ It mixes with the with the seed of the ground, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He doesn't mention the middle point. He doesn't mention that it grows and becomes green. Rather, He says فَأَصْبَحَ هَشِيمًا تَذْرُوهُ الْرِيَاحِ Right, then it becomes like 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 hay. It becomes withered away, and like hay, and the wind takes it wherever it goes. Right, this is the example of this world. Every single thing in this world, no matter who it is and no matter what it is, it has in life an end life. And when that end life happens, it finishes, it, it ceases to exist, its life is over, and there is no coming back to that, right? That's the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مُقْتَدِرًا And indeed, Allah has power over everything. He is the one who can cause life, and He is the one who causes death, right? This is the example of this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give us a reality check in, this, in these verses. He wants to tell us, remember your purpose. Right? So don't be fooled by the zina of this world. This world, the entire world is a test. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues. In the next verse, Al-malu wal banuna zinatul hayat dunya. Subhanallah. Al-malu wal banuna. Wealth and children are the zina of this world. Right? Zina is actually, if you, if you look it up in the dictionary, it means a decoration piece, a, play, a, a piece of adornment, right? You walk into the, to the living room and you know, you're, someone will put nice, beautiful decoration pieces. You're not allowed to touch them at all, right? No matter what. And so those decoration pieces are there to beautify the house, to make it feel, look like the house looks more beautiful and luxurious, right? And sometimes people will have so many decoration pieces in the house because it a adds, you know, uh, beauty to the house. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Al-malu wal banoon zina Right? Al -mal, wealth and banoon, children. Allah mentions wealth first because no matter what stage you are in life, you will want wealth. But after a certain time, you know, there's a stage in your life where you want children. You ask a 19 year old kid, he will not want children. And you ask a 67 year old man who's done with children, he will say, I don't want any more children. Right? But there's a middle stage where a person wants children. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wealth and banoon, zina tul hayat dunya. They are the decorations of this world. They make the, the world feel beautiful, right? They are the ones that, they, they, these are the things that, uh, you know, take us away from our purpose of, 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 of life, which is what? Our afterlife, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse is giving us another reality check. What is the, the, the test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us? Number one is al-mal, number two is al-banoon, right? The decoration, the zina of this world. And then Allah continues, وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتُ خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ أَمَلًا And then, وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتُ the remaining actions that are good are the only ones that will take us in the hereafter. They're the only ones that will stay. خَيْرٌ They are better. ثَوَابًا A better return for you. Right? If you want a, 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 an investment that will actually benefit you in the hereafter, it is al-baqiyatu salihat. Right? Al-baqiyatu salihatu khayrun. The best investment, the best thing for you, for the afterlife, the true life, is what? Is baqiyatu salihat. It is the best reward, the best return for you. Wa khayrun amala. And it's the best hope you can get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is baqiyatu salihat? Right? Salihat means good things, baqiyat means remaining. The remaining things, that remain, the things that remain that are good, right? And they are actually, this is a, 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 a very uh, peculiar, peculiar sentence, right? Because Imam Razi, he says this sentence grammatically does not make sense. Because salihat is a noun and baqiyat is also a noun. You don't use two nouns in this way, right? So nonetheless, al-baqiyat, the things that remain and the things that are good, right? They are both the same thing. But Allah uses two, the two words together. Meaning that the only thing that remains that is actually beneficial for you is going to be these things, right? And what are those things? Those are the things that we do that will help us in the afterlife. And Ibn Abbas says, Al-Baqiyatu Salihat is a dhikr of Allah. Another Sahabi, he says, Al-Baqiyatu Salihat is Salah. Another Sahabi, he says, it is your Sadaqah. But in re in, it means all of these things in one, right? It means all of the good that we do, that's going to remain. That's the focus we want to have, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa khayrun amala. Amala means aspiration. It's the best hope that you have. It's the best goal that you should have. Your goal should not be that, you know, you wake up every morning and you calculate your net worth. Today, my, my goal is to have this this year. My goal is to have this in this year. To buy a new car, to get a new house, or to pay down my mortgage. Rather, you should think about your goals of your afterlife. My goal is to build so many houses in Jannah. My goal is to do so many dhikr a day. My goal is to do so, many, so much for my afterlife. What am I doing for my afterlife? Am I preparing anything 
anything from my afterlife? Have I given Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything? Am I proud to stand before Allah on the day of judgment? These are the things we want to worry about. We get so engrossed in this world sometimes, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, just like the crop, every single thing is going to wither away and die. A person is young, then he gets, he, he becomes mature, and he's in the prime of his age, and then eventually he starts to wither away, and he passes away. Everything is going to, to uh, uh, go away. Every plant, every human being, right? Everything on the face of the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the next verse, He says, وَيَوْمَ نُسَيِّرُ الْجِبَالِ the, the, the mountains will become like clouds. They'll be floating in the air. Right? This is when you when you think of mountains, you think of something sturdy. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This is what the day of judgment is going to be, right? That everything is is, is going to is 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 going to change on the and the day of judgment. Allah mentions the description of the day of judgment in the next verses. But the, the day we want to focus on is a day of of of, of uh, judgment, right? It's the it's it's the afterlife. And this world is just a temporary place. Everything is going to go away. Even the mountains are going to go away, right? Everything that we can think of is going to have an end life. And we are also going to have an end life. When our end life hits, there is no going back. And we have to be ready for that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in these verses that this is what this world is. It is but a few, few uh, uh, fleeting moments of our life, right? It is as if we, you know, wake up, we, the person is born, and we give adhan and naqama in their ear, and a couple of minutes later, we perform their salatul janazah. That's what this world is. And it's time for us to think about this, right? Think about what, what is the purpose of this world? Why am I here? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set me for? Am I ready to, to pass this test if I stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? But we don't want to get bogged down in the beauty of this world. Yes, the beauty of this world is there for us to enjoy, but it's not to become our priority. Our amal, our hope, our aspiration is what? Our, our priority is what? The afterlife. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتِ Your good deeds that remain, خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابَ They are the best return from Allah and وَخَيْرٌ amala. They are the best things for you to aim for. They are the best things for you to aspire for. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that aspiration that we have the priority is our afterlife, right? Not this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who don't fall into the, 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 the tricks of shaitan when it comes to the test of the beauty of this world. أقول قول هذا